My name is Genevieve. I'm a paleoanthropologist and rock art researcher. And here I am again with the ongoing Q&A series for Cave Art 101 with World of Paleoanthropology. You keep asking really good questions. And so here I keep coming back to answer them. Um, my question today is actually a double question from Richard and Christopher, because they both asked a question which was sort of adjacent. So I thought I would just answer them together. Both of them were wondering slightly different aspects of this, but Neanderthals, jewelry, artifacts, how far back does this go? Was this something they learned from humans? What does this tell us about the development of artifacts and like symbolic behavior basically with not only us, but like the hominins in general. So hominins of course is our close relatives. Um, so really good questions. And that's like I said, they were sort of adjacent enough that I was like, you know what, let's just answer it all at once. So this is really fun because a, a lot of the answers I'm about to give you literally are from like the last five years. And so if you'd asked me this question about Neanderthals and artifacts a decade ago, I would have been answering you differently. The, what's really changed is originally, so basically let's go back for a second here to when I was an undergrad what the sort of common wisdom was at that point in time was that the oldest examples they had of some, basically some drilled pendants, so some perforated animal teeth and some shells, I think, came from a site called Arcisio Cure, um, which is in France, and it was about 45,000. So the big question was, well, did Neanderthals make it or did humans make it? Um, and or, Neanderthals maybe made it because it was found with Neanderthal tools, but maybe they didn't think it up themselves. They just happened to see some humans wearing it and wanted to do it for themselves. So kind of like a monkey see monkey do, but there kind of was a bit of a vibe there. Like maybe they weren't smart enough to come up with their own jewelry. Um, so that of course has now been completely turned on its head. Uh, we got some fantastic and just really interesting examples in the last few years with Neanderthals and with modern humans, which has really pushed back that, again, that date of like, you know, 40 to 50,000 for the starts of these things. And we're like, no, 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 let's double that or more. So to set the scene, the oldest homo sapien examples that we have of jewelry currently are little snail shells from Morocco. And these are little snail shells that have been drilled. Okay, so they've got perforated holes in them and they date to 100, I think they've said the average date they're guessing is around 142,000. So that's pretty darn cool. So either wearing it as a necklace, possibly attaching it to their clothes in some way, but little snail shells, modern humans, 142,000. So that's kind of the absolute oldest we have currently. Um, now, head over to Europe where humans didn't show up. I mean, even with some of the new finds are kind of pushing it back. Humans really were not on that continent before 50,000 ish, 50 to 55 from what, depending on who you talk to, but somewhere in that range, potentially. Dating to 115 to 120,000. So rather long before then, double plus, they now have examples of perforated shells, which also have red ochre rubbed into them. So perforated means that somebody took a tool point and actually drilled a hole so that it could be strung. Um, and they've got examples, I think it's like four or five shells now, which I think it's five shells, four of which have perforations. No, all have perforations, four have ochre on them. And this is from a site called Cueva de los Aviones in Spain. And they're from a very solid Neanderthal layer. So that's really cool right there by itself. So now we've got Neanderthals up in Europe wearing their bling by say 120,000. We've got humans doing their thing way, you know, over in Morocco. To the best of our knowledge, nobody's talking to each other at this point. They've got their snail shells going on. Um, other things that Neanderthals are doing in Europe is there's some really interesting examples of them doing something with bird feathers. And we don't have the same sort of evidence for humans doing that. So again, this is what's so cool about this is that because jewelry and ornamentation and like these kinds of little artifacts are very personalized in a way, like they're, they're, they're sort of about identity, probably also 
things that, you know, your culture thinks are cool to wear. So we don't have the same evidence of that affinity with bird parts um, with humans at this point, and certainly not that far back. What they, they were trying to understand, like, were they eating the birds? What were they doing with them? But here's some interesting points that make it seem like the birds were not just being eaten, which is that they seem to have a thing for black feathers. So they were going after raptor predator birds and they were going after crows and the ravens and that kind of bird. So they were making very specific decisions as to which birds they were bringing into their sites because of course we're finding the bones and they were doing things with the wings and these aren't parts of the wings where you would get good meat or anything. So they seem to be doing something else. So the thought is, they had a thing going with black feathers, very cool. There's also interesting evidence of them harvesting like the talon sheath off of eagle talons. So again, that we don't know exactly what they were doing with it, but it's very intriguing that they were doing that. And then there's also some other examples of like bones being drilled and things like that as well. But there's definitely something going on with the birds. So the birds is an interesting one. Those are a bit younger, I think. I think that was like 50 to 70,000. Um, but I believe there might, no, you know what? I think there was an example in Spain though, potentially of bird, bird wings being found in sites that was maybe pushing a hundred. So a lot going on and, and again, speaking to these like different cultures, which is very interesting too, because we're seeing different things being collected and used in, in interesting ways that don't, they, they don't seem to have any relation to food. Um, you know, they're not being cut from parts of the animal bodies that would actually been useful for eating. So they seem to have been doing something else. And again, of course, I mean, that's a whole other question we can talk about, but there's so much evidence of like ochre and so like reds and yellows and things being rubbed into shells, bones, um, other types of, I think ivory as well. Um, but you know, so we've got lots of different evidence of them doing things that we would consider to be part of the symbolic checklist, right? So these are things like burials with grave goods, um, color symbolism. So using ochre in ways that doesn't appear to be utilitarian, um, ornaments, personal ornamentation, adornment, jewelry, that kind of thing. That's very symbolic. Um, portable artifacts with markings on them. And then of course, cave art, which is the other piece. So that's kind of like the little group of check marks, right? Um, so they're, they're definitely now, it appears that they were doing their own thing long before they had any contact with humans. So I think we can feel fairly confident that Neanderthals had their own symbolic culture and their own idea of what bling looked like. Um, and then we've got a sense as well, even with Homo sapiens, that the different groups had different cultural interests as well. So some of them were using little snail shells, some of them were using different shells. Um, but yeah, there's a site in Israel as well where it's around 120,000 where we have other examples of perforated shells also with ochre. So there's definitely something going on there in common with shells, ochre, you know, wearing pendants, necklaces, things like that, um, adornment on the body. But I mean, yeah, but that's, that's what we've got. But again, with so many of these things, there's like little glimmers here and there. And, and I don't think we're quite at the point yet where we can really connect the dots. But with the feathers, there was a really big study done and they were finding feather use all the way from like Fumani Cave in Italy to the Iberian Peninsula and several places in between. So the feather use in Neanderthal seems to be a pretty widespread one. Um, I mean, it's incredible to think, right? Like were they putting them in their hair? Were they making necklaces? We don't know what they were doing, but it's, it's really cool to think of them, you know, as not just being the kind of semi-naked, you know, very primitive, sort of like the scrappy bit of fur on them sort of thing, but instead that they may have been actually quite nicely put together. So great question. Thank you, Richard and Christopher for giving me a chance to talk about it.